So we have uh, three very short presentations to orient you to what we are intending to do. Uh, I will be sharing the, the starting presentation with my colleague from UNIDO, uh, uh, Kristen Susan. And I think by way of By way of introduction, just to remind that uh, UN Water is indeed a global event. Uh, the UN Water, which is a coordination mechanism for all UN agencies, is mandated to, uh, to lead the process and also to identify what topics are discussed each year. And about three years ago, UN Water had agreed collectively, these 31 UN organizations, that this year the focus will be on water and energy. And that focus actually is reflected in then a number of other events. Uh, most notably, the World Water Week in Stockholm also takes on the same uh, topic. And, and so we have a continuity of discussion throughout the year. Uh, so that, that makes it actually very effective uh, that World Water Day is not a singular event, but it's actually a, a stream of events that take place throughout the year. And there is a very significant uh, policy uptake in the process. I also want to point out uh, before I get to the presentation that while we have a singular event which I'll be describing in a moment uh, in, in Tokyo, there's literally thousands of events across the world which are uh, connected. Uh, many of them are supported by the, the UN Water uh, Group as a, as a whole. And many of the UN Water members and partners uh, institutions are involved in their implementation. So as I mentioned already, the, the main event is going to be in Tokyo at the United Nations University headquarters. Uh, and uh, we've been quite busy in preparing uh, for the World Water Day uh, event itself. There's a website which is now active where you can download graphic designs, information about the, the topics. Uh, there's a number of links to information <laughs> resources. And there's also a meeting space where you can actually advertise about your own event. So it's, it's really uh, quite nice of a way of bringing everything together. Uh, we're very active on social media. The World Water Day uh, Facebook page has about 38,000 followers. And the Twitter feed has about 13,000, close to 14,000 uh, followers. So there is a lot of uh, uptake of, of discussion. Uh, and uh, particularly, the Twitter feed already has been quite active. Uh, now for uh, more than a month on, on the water energy issues. UN Water and particularly UNIDO and UNU together are preparing an advocacy guide which will talk about some key messages and also some information resources in a single document. There's been a number of preparatory events. Yesterday I presented the um, some key findings from the UN Water seminar that we had in Stockholm. And of course, this conference uh, itself is uh, also a, a major event. Question. Thank you, Adil. Well, what's the key message of the World Water Development Report? There are two sections. One is on the higher level policy section. This is to address the water energy issue within all the discussion which pertain to water development of an SDG on water. The second policy element is to really develop or to promote the development of policies for the integrated management and governance of water and energy in this nexus. And again, it will spill off. It will not be limited to water and energy. It's also addressing the, taking the issues of water, energy, land. Then more towards the implementation side guided are the four next points. It's making the business case for the water energy nexus. That will be one of the key issues for the World Water Development Report. How to create an enabling environment through public-private partnerships or how to create an enabling environment through economic instruments like pricing. Uh, fourth element will be how can we improve the joint access. Again, there is this field of tension, urban versus rural access to water. And last but not least, we need to look into the long-term sustainability of water and energy systems. We have seen quite a few presentations today, interesting presentations. Everywhere in the world, scarcity will become an issue or shortage. So. Again, how can we make our water and energy systems sustainable in the long term? Okay, thank you. And now I pass back to the housekeeper, to our colleagues from UNU who will host the event on their premises in Tokyo.
Thank you. Uh, in terms of the events, we start actually on 20th of March, and there is going to be an international uh, uh, training workshop for uh, journalists. And, and the idea there is to bring journalists from around the world together to really focus on the specific issue for the World Water Day. We've done this, we meaning UN Water, has done this a number of times, and it's been uh, very successful. There will also be a focus on the Asia-Pacific region, and by being in Tokyo, that's uh, logical, and we have partnership with the University of Tokyo, and the Japanese government is uh, supporting this initiative. There's also a technology exhibition and a photographic exhibition, and in fact, uh, there is a competition going on for photography. We just started uh, a, a couple of weeks ago where people can submit their photographs online and, and they will be the winners will be displayed at the exhibition. The main event will be on 21st of March, which we realize is a day before the actual World Water Day, but uh, because it falls on a Saturday, we decided to uh, host the, the main events the day before. Uh, a key point, as uh, Kristen pointed out, will be the launch of the World Water Development Report, which is also on the same topic. There will be a keynote speech uh, by a high-level personality uh, from, from Japan, and we're still in discussion about, uh, about that. There will be two panels. One is uh, going to be high-level uh, ministerial, head of UN agency level uh, dialogue, and, and the key issue there will be to look at some of these larger policy ramifications, particularly the post-2015 development agenda and the SDGs. There's a working level dialogue, and uh, there will be two presentations. One would be the Water for Life Awards, uh, which are organized by the office here in Zaragoza on behalf of UN Water, and the Stockholm Water Prize is also announced uh, at, the, at the World Water Day event. Question. Thank you. Well, again, what should be the output and the outcomes of the World Water Day? Why do we host this event? Why do we organize it? One of the key issues is information which is available needs to be shared. And information will be shared in the forms of photos, photographs, images, as well as on technologies which will be available. After the World Water Day, we'll come out with a meeting report which will summarize the findings from the various discussion panels. And again, if you look at the panelists, this might become a very interesting document. There will be stronger media engagement to bring the awareness on the water and energy nexus to a broader public and to achieve public outreach through focused media stories. We also have a policy output. This will be a policy in the form of a policy brief and which will be disseminated to the UN system, again, having in mind all this intense discussion which are targeted towards the, de uh, the definition of the sustainable development goal on water. And last but not least, and again, Josefina will provide a lot of information, is then the engagement in follow-up events. World Water Day is not a one-stop celebration. This celebration should take place throughout the year. So we get an overview about the public events and last but not least, also what will happen during World Water Week on, in Stockholm in September this year. Well, why are we here? We want to linkage this conference, the outcomes and outputs from our meeting to Tokyo. So basically what we want to bring in our luggage from Saragossa to Tokyo will be case studies which present success stories, in particular about public-private <coughs> partnerships how the water energy nexus can be effectively addressed in this constellation. It will be about the application of technology, research and innovation. Again, as I mentioned, how can we achieve sustainability in this nexus? And I think it's quite important that we start to really realize we cannot no longer look at water in one sector, or in one silo, energy in one silo, they're interlinked and they're interlinked with other natural resources like land. And what we want to bring to Tokyo is also how we can create this in enabling environment, what incentives can be provided to promote the more efficient use of water and energy, and what funding mechanisms allow to promote this more, or the creation of this enabling environment and the creation of a framework which provides the necessary incentives. Well, and, and just for your information, 
please find Adele mentioned before that there is a Twitter page, there is a Facebook page, please find the addresses. So, and feel free to post the tweet or to become engaged on Facebook too. And with this, I would Thank like also to hand over to our hosts. Or? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we quickly move on to uh, the other two presentations and see we, whether we have time at the end for uh, uh, some question and answers. Uh, I'm quite pleased to introduce uh, uh, my colleague from the Japanese Ministry of Land Infrastructure and Transport, uh, Mr. Savano. Uh, the Japanese government has been uh, very supportive of the arrangements and uh, has been uh, very closely engaged with us in the planning. So, uh, Sawano-san, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm from uh, Ministry of Ground Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism, you call it Emirate, Japan. Uh, firstly, I just quickly introduce our uh, water management schemes in Japan. So, uh, since uh, water management uh, issue uh, comprises many stakeholders, so and minist ministries are concerned are also diverse. Among the ministries, uh, Emirates has a pivotal role in uh, coordinating other uh, water-related ministries. Emirates uh, manages uh, water at normal time and also emergency situations such as flood and drought. Uh, through the uh, quantitative and uh, qualitative data management. Uh, one of the grants for the appropriate water management was its uh, water resources development promotion role. Uh, since uh, 1960, we experienced the rapid growth of the economics and the population, and uh, it accompanies the requirement for more water. So, uh, to alleviate the friction and uh, make the uh, appropriate uh, development schemes, uh, we introduced this law, and this law requests a basic, uh, establishment of the basic plan for water resources development. So, we coordinate uh, many uh, stakeholders or users uh, to establish uh, and uh, allocate the appropriate, appropriate the water volume uh, to uh, future social and economic development. There are some s several steps in that side. I don't have a time to uh, explain, but anyway, it imp uh, combines the process of uh, national and local government uh, dialogue and also uh, stakeholders as well. So this is a description of basic plan. So we uh, set a target on demand and supply. And, uh, we, uh, according to the demand and supply scheme, we set a uh, future plan for facility development. So these uh, schemes uh, show the uh, national uh, strategies, and uh, but at the same time, uh, we try to uh, make good use of our assets, using latest technologies and. Uh, paying close attention to the management to get more fruits from the same. So, for example, this is one example. We promote raw head hydropower generation at many places. This is another example. We utilize the switch, uh, switch resources energy uh, by uh, introducing solid fuel facility, methane uh, fermentation facility, or also uh, we uh, introduce a phosphorus collection facility. And uh, we also are promoting the, uh, uh, some innovative sewage technology demonstration project. Ah, just a moment. So uh, the role of the government is not only provides uh, stable energy and water, uh, but also we have the uh, responsibility for the risk management, uh, especially hydro, uh, energy uh, generators are basically located in the relatively safe place compared to the summer uh, generator places that are located in the coastline. We experienced a big disaster like tsunami. So at that time, uh, the first moment uh, food is uh, recovered from the disaster was the hydro energy. So we are combining such kind of schemes to uh, provide a safe and uh, 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 safe and reliable country to the people. 
So, uh, we are looking forward to seeing you at UNU headquarters in Tokyo, Japan, in coming March. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sawano-san. We'll hold off the questions if there's time at the end. I would like to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Seo Yutsunomiya, who's representing uh, the Kumamoto City in Japan. And uh, this, the Kumamoto City has also been closely involved in organization of the World Water Day activities. And uh, part of the reason for their engagement is that uh, uh, they, uh, the, the city won the Water for Life Award this year, uh, which is given out by UN Water, in recognition of their uh, um, very interesting approach towards uh, water management. So, the floor is yours. Buenos tardes, señoras y señores. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Seiyo Utsunomiya, and I am one of the coordinators for the World Water Day 2014 events in Kumamoto City, Japan. As some of you may be aware, Kumamoto City was awarded to win the United Nations Water for Life Best Practices Award last year in 2013. When we heard that the 2014 World Water Day was going to be held in Japan, we really wanted to get involved. Winning the Best, Practice, Best Practices Award in 2013 has really helped to raise awareness regarding water issues within our region. We hope to keep this motivation and interest in Kumamoto strong by holding an event directly after the Tokyo Award Ceremony. Our events will run from Saturday the 22nd of March until Sunday the 23rd of March and will provide you with an opportunity to experience Kumamoto's unique water environment. In addition to some interesting speeches, there will be a chance to visit Kumamoto's famous castle and the local beautiful green environment. Kumamoto is located around one of the world's largest caldera volcanoes, Mount Aso, and thanks to our natural groundwater springs, we are proud to offer our citizens mineral water straight from the top. We'll, we'll be able to invite about 10 people and uh, arrange a return flight from Tokyo to Kumamoto and cover the cost in cars during their stay in Kumamoto, uh, for example, transport accommodation. We do have a lot more information about the event and about Kumamoto City, but unfortunately, uh, we only have a limit, uh, limit, uh, limited amount of time. So if any of you have any questions or um, would like to know more, then feel free to contact, come, to, come and see either myself or my colleague Tomu Nagata later on. We hope you will be able to join us in Kumamoto and celebrate UN World Water Day 2014 uh, with us. Uh, muchas gracias por su atención. Uh, thank you very much. A couple of minutes we can still take. Thank you very much for these very brief but informative presentations. Uh, if there are any questions or comments, uh, now is your opportunity. Yes, Ozofina. I just wanted to make sure that we, so to say what we promised, the, there, is, there is some copies of the messages for World Water Day, which you know are here and they're also posted outside in the main hall, and we are looking forward to your comments on this. I think a lot of what has been said are, is relevant to the messages, both illustrating them and also sometimes a little bit different. So maybe we can get some feedback from you, and I think you have the copies, no? Yeah. Th thank you very much for pointing that out, uh, Josefina. We have a few printed copies. You can pick them out on the way out and uh, we're uh, quite pleased to receive any comments or suggestions for improvement uh, we, as we still have a couple of months to go uh, before we get to the World Water Day. Uh, we can certainly refine and fine tune our messages to make sure we're covering the whole spectrum of, uh, of issues. 
Any other comments or points? Person, do you want to add something? Okay, well, it looks like we're standing between you and lunch. Uh, so thank you very much for your attention. And we look forward to seeing many of you in Tokyo. As I mentioned yesterday, uh, if you're interested, please contact uh, either Kristen or, or myself, uh, and we'd be quite happy to accommodate the, your engagement and participation. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Avil. So now we are going to go downstairs, outside, to do the family photo, and also lunch is also downstairs. You have to go back in, and then behind the reception, you can there is uh, some stairs that you will go downstairs to, to have um, lunch. Thank you, Thank you very much. And don't forget to sign in for the technical visits, please. <laughs>